Please follow us on Facebook, New Hope International Church, Facebook and Varula Haprasit, and the YouTube channel, the New Hope International Church for Thai language, and also Varula Haprasit channel for English language. The Instagram for the English one called New Hick, N E W H I C, and also TikTok, New Hope International Church, or at New Hope International, so you never miss a teaching of the Word of God and the blessing to your life. God bless you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Word of God. I'm so glad that you seek to know the Lord and you love the Lord too so much, and you want to obey His teaching. God promises in the Bible, in the Book of Psalm, chapter 91, verses 14 to 16, the Lord say, "I will rescue those." who love me, I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble and will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. I believe that you are that person who love the Lord and you're going to obey what He says in the scripture. God bless you. I will see you in te the teaching. This will be the third part of the teaching called Evil Works of the Devil or of Satan. This teaching is in the series called More Than Conquerors. I want to train you to be the soldier of Christ. I want you to be victorious people. In order to be victorious, we need to understand how to fight spiritual warfare. This is going to be a big, big theory. I can continue to teach again and again about our enemies, about how to fight the spiritual warfare, and we're going to be trained to fight the spiritual warfare. Let me read Psalm 66 verse 10. I review a little bit here from the last few times. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. The Bible says clearly that in this world, in this life, we all, as believers, are going to have to go through some trials, difficulties, and tests in order to prove our faith, whether it's a real faith, genuine faith or not. We're all going to go through the test. And when the test comes, God allows difficulty or the attack of the enemy or the scheme of the enemy come against us. So we need to understand those attacks, those schemes very well so that we can pass the test and have victory. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3 and verse 12, My brother, count it all joy. Everyone, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. When you face difficulties, don't cry, don't get upset. You laugh, you have joy. Why? When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The testing of your faith produces good character in you. You grow more. If you don't pass the test, you will be staying like a baby Christian forever. You need to pass the test. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who loved him. How many people want to go to heaven and receive the crowd of life on your head? I want to. I believe that a lot of percentage of the New Hope International Church members will have a lot of crowds on your head, maybe in your cabinet, at your mansion in heaven. You can go into your cabinet. Oh, today I'm going to wear the crowd of uh, light or life. Or oh, another day, you can, like, uh, you, you know, you have different clothes each day. You don't wear the same clothes every day, is that right? Okay, you change your clothes. The next day, you wear the crown of glory. The next day, you wear the crown of righteousness. You have so many crowns on your cabinet because you are strong and very fruitful Christian. First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, all this scripture talk about tests and difficulties and spiritual warfare. In this, you greatly rejoice Though now for a little while it need be, you have been grieved by various trials, various difficulties and challenges, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, 
may be found to praise, honor, glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. On that day, when Jesus showed up the second time at his return, we're going to stand before the judgment of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God, the Lord Jesus, at his judgment seat, will speak to you, smile to you, and say, Good and faithful servant. You pass all these tests. You have done the best you can for my kingdom. This is my reward for you. He smiled at you, he praised you, and he honored you because you passed all the tests. How can you pass all the tests? How can you win the spiritual warfare? You need to be trained in the church. Christians who don't go to church will not be trained. That's why they get defeated all the time. My job as a pastor is to train you to be the spiritual martial art person. Yesterday, a group of people celebrate my birthday. Uh, at the condominium, and they have a question. One, qu- one of the questions they ask is that, what Pastor Lau liked to be when he was a young boy or young teenager? And my answer in that, I didn't tell anybody. My answer in that question is, I want to be a soldier. When I was a young boy, I want to be in the military because I love to fight with bad guys. That's why I learned Taekwondo and Judo, and I learned how to fight. Now, after I became a Christian, I learned how to fight against our enemy. And we learned that we have three kinds of enemies in this planet Earth. The first one that we are learning right now is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. We have the enemy, Satan. I like the proverbs of the Chinese country, the Chinese people. The proverbs say this way. I don't know how to speak in Mandarin, but this is a true proverb of Chinese people. If you know your enemy and you know the strength of your enemy, and you know who you are. You can fight 100 times. You win 100 times. So you need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know what you have. And you know, need to know who your enemies are. And you know their strength, their schemes, and their ways of doing things. If you are well trained, you can win 100 times of the 100 times. So this is why I produced this series of teaching to train you. In the past two times, we learned that, number one, the devil is the tempter. He tempts us to sin. So anytime you hear the voice in your brain here telling you to do something against God, you have to resist it and say no to it. The devil speaks to your brain. The Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And he tempts you to sin. There are two kinds of sin. Number one, the sin of doing bad things, like stealing, committing adultery, or lying, cheating. Or another kind of sin is the sin of rejecting to do the right thing. God may tell you to do something, go help that person. Buy buy food and bring food to that person who just had a baby last week. Feed her with food. And you say, no, I will not do it. Even though you don't go out to rob a bank, but you reject to do the right thing that God told you to do. That is also sin. He's going to tempt you to sin against God. Number two, he is the accuser. He will accuse you. I never forget when I first started this church. Oh, I tell you, all kind of voice came into my brain and from the mouth of people. You need to understand sometimes Satan talks to you directly to your brain and sometimes Satan used the mouth of people to speak against you. And some people work for the devil, so they will come against you and speak against you, accuse you. Oh, you speak with accent. You've never been a pastor. You're just a new surgeon. You cannot be a pastor. You're too young. Accusation come against you. The same thing with many of you here. The devil may speak to you. You speak French. You cannot do anything in America. No. 
God can use you to be a missionary in America. Even though you speak French, God can use anybody who is willing to be used by God. Don't listen to the words of accusation. Number three, he is a deceiver. He's a great deceiver. He will make you believe the wrong thing to be the right thing. So you have to be careful. He loves to deceive. That's why we need to know the Bible because the Bible tells us the right thing and the truth. Not only that, he is the murderer. The devil come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He like to kill your marriage. He has. He want to kill your finances. He want to destroy your health. I believe sickness and disease come from sin and the devil. So we fight against this thing: sickness and disease. Poverty is not of God. Poverty is of the devil too. And he try to break up marriage. He want husband and wife to fight. And kill your marriage because he knows that if he can kill your marriage, it will hurt you and will hurt your kids and will impact many generations to come. He loves to kill, to destroy. Not only that, he is a liar. He loves to lies. Don't listen to him. He controls the world. Nowadays, we are in the living in the generation of screen, and when you watch a screen, you have to be careful. Because in the screen, there are so many things in the world that are influenced by the devil, and the devil control the world right now. He try to put those idea and those system into your eyes, come from the world system. This is why I'm so selected in watching anything on the screen. I don't waste my time on the things on the screen because a lot of them come from the devil anyway. Why I waste my time? I rather read the Bible. I rather listen to the good sermon and build my life and my faith. We have only 24 hours a day. We have limited time in life. He controls the world. He, the origin of false teaching and the cults is the devil. The devil come in with religions that reject Jesus Christ, and even the church. You have to be careful. Because even though we claim to be Christian, but we can be affected by demonic doctrines. Demonic doctrines can be in the church, so we have to be careful to follow the Bible 100 percent. We need to interpret the Bible by using the context of the Bible. In other words, you cannot come up with a doctrine with one verse. You need to have one verse compared to many, many verses in the Bible. The Bible say that the witness have, in order to confirm something in the court, you need to have two to three witnesses. In the same way, if somebody come up with a doctrine that could not go along with the rest of the Bible, you don't believe in that doctrine. It has to be confirmed by two or three verses or more verses in the Bible. He is a liar. Not only that, he make us not forgive others. He make us have bitterness and forgiveness. He knows that when we un- we don't forgive people, we open the door for the torturer to come in, and we get into trouble. A lot of people get sick because they don't want to forgive their parents, husband, ex-husband, ex-wife. So they get sick because they don't want to forgive. Let go, forgive. Okay. Number nine, he put doubts about God in our heart. He loved to. Put doubt in your heart, so therefore you have to resist him. Anytime doubt come, bye bye. I gonna have faith. I can I gonna work for faith, not for doubt. Last one that we taught last time. Satan tempt us to commit sexual immorality, and he knows that human have weakness about this thing. So there are three kinds of sexual immorality. Number one, fornication, which means relationship. Sexual relationship before marriage. Two, adultery. Sexual relationship after marriage. Three, homosexuality. Relationship between the same sex. All these are unbiblical. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the next one. I hope to finish five more today. You have the paper there. Okay, number eleven. The eleven scheme and plan of the enemy. Satan tempt us to become conceited and prideful. 
1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, not a novice, not a young believer, lest being puffed up with pride. The Apostle Paul talked about, don't appoint young believer. Don't appoint new members of the church because we don't know their life yet. We don't know how mature they are. With pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Don't appoint immature people, young believers. Some people may be a Christian for 20 years, but they're still very young in their spiritual life. They are like a baby Christian because they've never been trained. So in New Hope International Church, we don't appoint people easily. We want to make sure they pass the test, they prove their life, they're mature enough to handle the pressure in the ministry. Don't appoint young, spiritually young people to be leader because what happened? The devil will tempt them to be conceited and prideful. Pride leads to destruction. The root of sin that the devil come against God is pride. That's why pride is a big deal. Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, talk about the devil here. Talk about Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven. You mean the devil, Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, I, everyone say I, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farther side of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to show to the lowest depth of the pit. You notice that in this scripture, Satan talks about I five times. You have to be careful. Every time I is the center of your life, you may be prideful. Thank God for birthday celebration for me. Thank God for the gifts that some of you gave to me. I really appreciate the birthday gift. Thank God for the party last night. But you know, the whole time, I was thinking in my heart, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. I'm just here to serve them. I'm here as, as their servant. I'm not the center. The center of this community is Jesus Christ. I want to give glory, all the glory to Jesus. We are here because we love Jesus. And I just have one uh, a calling to be a pastor and teacher. But we want to glorify Jesus. I don't want to fall into pride because pride will lead me to destruction. I don't want to be like the devil. Anytime the devil says, oh, wow, look at this. You have 100,000 people in YouTube following you now and increase every day. I say, I don't care. Actually, I just talked to myself this morning. I produce a teaching in the YouTube not for fame and for money and reputation. I want to just feed my sheep. Feed people with the truth of God. I want Jesus to be glorified. And that's how the devil brought sin into the world the first time. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. Then the serpent, the devil, said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You will be like God. Is that pride? Yes. Exactly the same like the devil say, I will lift up my position high. I, you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. So the devil tempted Eve with pride. And now next sentence is about what we're going to say next, learn next time. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, the lust of the flesh, the stomach, that it was pl pleasant to her eyes, the lust of the eyes, and a tree desirable to make our one wise, 
the pride of life. We're going to talk about that next sermon, about the next um, enemy of our life, sinful nature. We have three parts of our sinful nature, three main parts. The lust of the flesh, the stomach, nice cushion, nice first-class seat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the lust of the flesh, stomach. Wow, look at that. Buntit nương. Ooh, I need to eat a lot. The lust of the eyes. Wow, look at nice car there. That nice house. I need to work five jobs to buy that house. And then you not, never go to church because of the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He wants you to become prideful. I need position in this church. People need to salute me. People need to see that I have position. I'm such a great preacher. Oh, I can grab the microphone. People follow me, follow me. The pride of life. She also gave it to her husband. She ate it and she fell into sin. Who suggested to her that she should get into this direction? The devil. This is why anytime you hear a voice of lifting yourself up, thinking about you're such a successful businessman, you're so rich, oh, you know the Bible, you can quote Hebrew and Greek. Oh, I'm a great preacher. I saved so many souls. I'm a great evangelist. You have to be careful. You need to give glory to Jesus only. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is supposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Then after talking about pride and humility, Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The devil wants you to fall, wants you to miss the grace of God because you are prideful. From now on, make sure you serve Jesus, you love your wife, you treat your husband with humility. Don't think about your own name. Don't think about your own success, your own riches. Always give glory to Jesus. Everyone say, I will not be prideful. I will be humble like Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus humbled three levels. Let me speak quickly. Number one, he came from the throne of heaven and become a man. That's first level of humility. Second level of humility, he washed the feet of the disciple. He was serving as a lowest kind of slave because in that generation, when people walk into the house of somebody's house, the lower slave will stand at the door and wash the feet of the owner or the guest of the house. Three, he humbled himself to the point that he was naked on the cross and died on the cross. Three levels of humility. He's the most humble man in the whole human history. Therefore, God lifted Jesus up three levels. Number one, he was raised from the dead. Number two, he was raised up to heaven in front of more than 500 people's eyes. Three, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, the position of the highest authority in the earth. How many people want God to lift you up? What do you do? Humble. If you want God to lift you up, Humble yourself. Don't follow the ways of the devil. Another scheme of the enemy is he will make you feel discouraged. Discouraged in your marriage. Discouraged in your ministry, in your job, in your business. He loves to discourage you. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. When you humble yourself, he exalts you. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, who is the adversary? Satan, the devil. The devil walks about like a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Stay fast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God 
of all grace. I like that. All grace. God has grace for every area of your life, not just one area. All area, including sitting on the airplane. Who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus? After you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settled you. The devil loves to discourage you to give up. You give up your marriage. You give up your ministry. You give up what you like to do, what you're called to do. He wants to bring bad things into your life so that you get discouraged. Don't listen to the devil. Resist him. Only listen to God. Stay in the Word. Stay in the promises of God. Give your care to God. Anytime I get discouraged, I will quote the promises in the Bible. I told you many years ago, I was sick by severe skin inflammation to the point that I almost quit being a neurosurgeon because when I performed surgery, my hands hurt so much. Oh, should I quit? Should I quit? But I keep claiming the promise of God. By the stripe of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. By the stripe of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. And eventually, he healed me. He wants to discourage me to be practicing neurosurgery. He wants to discourage you to stop serving God, to stop loving your husband, stop loving your wife, stop taking care of your children. Don't be discouraged. Rise up. I like what the Bible says about King David. I don't quote the scripture in there. I can find for you. The, at one time, King David was so depressed because he went out to fight the battle. He came home, and the enemy burned all the city and the house and took the wife and the kids with them. He came home, and not only that, his followers want to stone him and kill him. <laughs> Can you imagine? He, he was so discouraged. And the Bible says, and David encourage himself in the Lord. So he was sitting there sad for a while and suddenly, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be defeated. Ah, God is good. God is so good. God is so good. He started to encourage himself and start to remember all the good things. Oh, that day, Goliath got knocked down by one stone. Hey, God is good. Wow, look at the time of Joshua. The wall of Jericho came down. God is good. He began to encourage himself by the word of God. Anytime you get discouraged, you need to do like King David. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And we should encourage one another. I have a sermon I hope to preach one day called Encourage One Another. We should be people who always encourage one another because the devil Work opposite. He wants to discourage you. We, work, we need to work opposite to the devil. Turn to the person next to you. Wow, you are so good today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Encourage one another. You are anointed. Yeah. You are anointed. Amen. <laughs> okay. Next one. I try to hurry up. I want to finish this one. Revelation 2.10, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crowd of life. Another job of the devil is to Bring persecution to you. As long as you are on fire for God, you want to serve God, you want to build the kingdom, you live for Jesus, He's going to try to stop you by bringing somebody against you and persecute you. It can be just the level of your boss may start to mistreat you in the office because he finds out you are a Christian. Or maybe your parents say, get out of this house. You become a Christian. You are not my son anymore. Or maybe your friend at work reject you, ridicule you, talk bad about you. Or can be the point to the level you get killed. You're killed for Jesus. We call martyr. Do I say it right? Martyr. 
Martyr actually come from the Greek language mean you witness for Christ and you die for your wit- your testimony. Because you tell people about Jesus and you sacrifice your life for the testimony. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, they overcame the enemy by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the words of their testimony. So when we get persecution, when we live for Jesus Christ, that comes from the devil. And don't be discouraged. Keep going. Be faithful. And you're going to have the crowd of life at the end. Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. This is an encouraging word for Jesus Christ. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. When you get persecution, you should think, wow, this is a chance to get big reward in heaven now. Praise God. Amen? I used to be discouraged easily when people start to reject me, gossip about me, talk bad about me, especially in Thailand, because I'm the first guy who brought the fire of God to Thailand. Oh, I tell you, like hell blow up in Thailand. People got mad at me, uh, religious leaders talk bad about me, everything. At the beginning, I was so discouraged. But later on, hey, this is good. I'm going to have a lot of rewards in heaven. Because they they persecute me. (laughs) And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. So don't be discouraged when you get persecution. Maybe rejection. Maybe you get fired from your job because you are a Christian. Maybe you are dating a girlfriend for a long time. And then suddenly you became a Christian and your girlfriend say, Oh, I don't want you anymore. Get out of my life. Bye-bye. You get persecution by rejection. You need to choose God, not your girlfriend. Your girlfriend cannot give you eternal life. And there are many women out there anyway. Don't worry, God sent a better one. God is a God. (laughs) I think you got that, huh? (laughs) Some lady rejected you. (laughs) And now God sent a better one. (laughs) <laughs> the best one. You know, I, I studied the Bible, and I find out that our God is a God who pays us back. He paid back Job double. The book of Isaiah say, you get discouraged because something happened to you, and God say in the book of Isaiah, I pay you back double. So as long as you walk with God faithfully, God pay you back. Don't worry. Amen? Yeah. Our God is a God of payback. Everyone say, payback. Pay Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan hindered us. Another thing that the devil loved to do is to hinder you from serving God and following God. Oh, I remember... When Pastor Dan and I started to seek the file of God or revival in 1996, I never forgot. Hell broke loose. Oh, we quarrel. We have problem at home. We start to get sick. The devil tried any way to stop us from following the file of God and fighting and get into revival. Again and again. And I listen to many testimonies around the world. Many Christians around the world, when I went to certain city to have revival service, like I'm going to Europe for revival service, or to Thailand for revival service, all people will tell me, Pastor, you know, a few days before your revival service, accident happened to me. Oh, a few days, I quarreled with my husband. Oh, we thought we're gonna go, not going to go there anymore. The devil would do anything to hinder you, bring trouble to you, quarrel, 
some conflict in the family, car accident, the boss yell at you. He will do anything to stop you from serving God and following God. What you need to do is to be determined. I will not let anybody stop me from following the Lord Jesus Christ and serving Him. You need to be determined. I shared with a young adult care group yesterday morning. I say that, thank God I could come to this point of my life because that is my personality of being determined. When I came to America, all kinds of things happen. People laugh at me. People uh, discriminated me. I could not speak English very well. The work so hard. My, my boss let me be on call every day. Only one day off a month. Can you imagine? On call every day. And I have to work like a lower class in the hospital. But I determined to get the American Board of Neurosurgery. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to pursue. And eventually, I got it. Because I determined. You need to determine that I'm going to win the battle and I'm going to pursue God and serve God no matter what hindrances come to against me. You keep going. This is what Paul said. Look at Paul said in Acts chapter 26, verses 19 to 21. So then King Agrippa, he was standing in front of the king. He was arrested. I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. When you read this scripture, you can see the determination of the apostle Paul. First to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea and to the Gentiles also. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. Wow. Paul faced a lot of problems. He was put in jail. He was whipped many times. He faced shipwreck. He almost died in the ocean. He faced so many things. But one thing about Paul is that I will keep running my race. I will never give up. I look at the vision God gave to me. I never stop. And the interesting thing is that if Paul was not put in jail, we would not have this Bible to read. Half of the New Testament was written by Paul. Why? He was in jail. So sometimes bad things happen for the good things. He was put in jail so that we have the Bible to read. Is that right? Otherwise, he keep running. He keep traveling. He did not have time to write the letter. But because he was in jail, he keep writing letter to Galatia, to Ephesus. We have the Bible to read. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press on to reach the end of the race and we receive the heavenly price for which God, through Christ, is calling us. Amen. Everyone, make your hand like this. I press in. I will not give up. I run the race. To the, to the end. And I'm going to have a lot of prizes and, and rewards in heaven. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Don't stop serving God. No matter what hindrance comes to you, keep going. Keep going. Don't yield to the devil. Last one. Satan causes division among Christians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 to 11. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his. What happened in the church? There will be always some conflict of ideas, personality, giftings, plan, and purpose. Always, if you say that, I'm going to find a perfect church that no conflicts. Ah, maybe you can go to heaven first. 
and see the church in heaven. <laughs> Believe me, when you are in the church, you're going to find some conflicts. Some of you may like to eat pizza for snack, but some of you like to eat rice. So when you walk out and see the pizza, oh, they are not sensitive to me. You're going to fe- find some conflict. That's why we need to forgive each other all the time. Yeah, Turn the person next to you and say, I will always forgive you. <laughs> we need to forgive one another, especially in the international church. Wow, so easy to offend each other because we have different cultures. But this is good. You know why? Because when you face this, you grow up more to learn how to love people unconditionally. Love people who look different from you. Love John, who's a big guy and speak loud, who mix with the Asian who were quiet and small. We need to love each other. And the devil will do anything to make you hate each other and forgiving one another and have the strife. One time I say this, strife is the manifestation of the devil. Unity and peace is the manifestation of the presence of Jesus Christ. If Jesus is there, you will find peace and unity. So anytime you want to fight, you want to quarrel, you are welcoming Satan into your home, into the church. We must be peacemaker. Sometime in my house, when I want to do this and Pastor Da want to do this, we go opposite way. Okay, la. Happy wife, happy life. Whatever you want. I'm not going to fight with her. Let her, let her get her way. But she's happy, and then make me happy. Amen. All the husbands say amen. amen. <laughs> In the church too, sometimes we want to do something. I remember one time, uh, a nice church in Bellevue on Northeast 8 is being sold. Was being sold, was. No, not over there, in, in Bellevue. And I want that church so much. I, I brought it to the eldership and said, we need to buy that church. It's on Northeast 8, Bellevue. Nice parking. All the elders say, no. <laughs> Including my wife. Okay. Happy wife, happy life. Happy elders, happy church. <laughs> so I don't fight, I yield it. I say, okay, fine. That church was 6 million, 6.5 million, smaller than this church. And I yielded. By the time we find this building, the stock market crashed. And this church only 3.4, half price of that church. Bigger, nicer, and we don't have to do mortgage because those Five, six years as we save money, we have enough money to pay for this building. Cash. The Bible says in Psalm 133, verses 1 to 3, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil, talking about anointing the presence of the Holy Spirit, upon the head upon the leader, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. The, if husband and wife become united, the anointing come down unto the husband and down to his beard, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like, so go down to the kids. The same thing, elders in the church, if they are united, we talk in unity. We forgive each other, we yield to each other, we surrender to each other, we submit to each other, we don't fight like this. When we have unity, the anointing will come down to the senior pastor, run down into the whole congregation. So the whole congregation is going to live in the blessing of God. It is like the dew, mean refreshing, 
of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. Mountain of Simon, of Zion represent the churches of Jesus Christ. For there, the Lord commanded the blessing. Not only the blessing, life. How many people want life? How many people want the blessing? You know, when God, the king of all kings, the greatest authority in the whole universe, commands something, no one can stop. Even your enemies on earth try to stop the blessing of God in your life, they cannot stop. And what is the key to get the blessing, the commanded blessing? Husband and wife live in unity. Family live in unity. Don't quarrel, don't fight. Church live in unity. God command the blessing into the community of unity and peace. Amen? Amen. But the devil loves to kill you, so he wants you to break up, to fight, to quarrel, to not forgive each other. Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 to 5, last scripture. Look at what Paul say. Listen carefully. Fulfill my joy. In other words, fighting, strife, division, hatred in the church cause God to be grieved. If you want God to smile at you, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Don't be selfish. Don't think about your own benefit, but think about the benefit of the whole family, of the whole church, of the whole community. Be generous. Think about the benefit of everybody. But in lowliness, so in humility of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are better than me. (laughs) Two days ago, two days ago, my daughter sent me uh, Instagram. And I listened to that Instagram. That preacher, he's an African-American preacher. He said this way, you know, God gave me a wife. She is my helper. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is my helper. So the Holy Spirit knows everything. He is my helper. Therefore, I know now my wife is better than me because she is my helper. You get it? Husband say, my wife wife is better than me. me. Why don't you say that? (laughs) But you can say it. (laughs) She is your helper. God sent her, her to you to be your helper. She is better than you. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Wow, if you practice this scripture, Philippians 2, 2 to 5, no fighting anymore. Everything you do, think about the benefit of others, not about your own benefit. You think that other people are better than you all the time. You are humble. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The devil will work hard to go against this scripture, to make you prideful, fighting, I'm better than you. You need to listen to me. I'm the boss. I'm the husband. I need to control you. No. Husband, you live your life for the benefit of your wife. And the wife, in the same way, think about the benefit of the husband. Church, I don't pastor this church for my own benefit, for the benefit of the members. I want you to be blessed. And the same thing, you think about the benefit of others. You see other people better than you. This is Christ's spirit, not satanic spirit. Satan will make you fight, compete, hate each other, and look down on each other. Don't do that. Amen? Amen. We're going to keep this church pure and holy, and we're going to win the warfare. From now on, Go back home, review this paper that we gave to you. Anything that comes with this 15, I have to get a fifth, the scheme of the enemy, 15 things in that paper, you recognize right away and you say, no, I'm not going to yield to this. 
Amen? Amen. Maybe once a year you can read this paper again, all this scripture and all this scheme of the enemy. So don't you know his scheme? By the way, the devil. I cannot finish here. The devil does not deal with you directly. He is in the heavenly places up there. The the spirit that deal with you is his army, his ground troop soldier. They are evil spirit or demons. Therefore, we need to cast them out from the church. And this morning, I woke up, and I was thinking about the Vietnamese brother and sister who are new to this church. And whoa, so hard to do casting out demon on Sunday, because you all run to the good food there. <laughs> so I was thinking this morning when I woke up, maybe we should have a casting out demon service for the Vietnamese brother and sister. One day, just special. Maybe we should do that to Congolese too. To do that to Chinese, we have a special service, cast out demon, out of them, because hard to do on Sunday. Sunday too busy. Amen. Amen. So from now on, you're gonna know the schemes of the enemy, and you know how to say no, to resist, and run the race. Be determined to be the. Disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and always win. Believe this. Okay, listen one more time. If you yield to Him, you are in His plan, and He come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't get into His trap. <coughs> Everyone, make your hand like this and make noise. You want to get into that trap? <laughs> Have you ever seen rat in the in the trap? I've seen one time. My my house has a, some rats, so we put the trap on, and the rat went in. <laughs> I don't want to see my members. I want to see my member. Yeah. Running, victorious. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us the Bible and help us to understand the scheme of the enemy. Lord, we want to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we can recognize the cunning scheme of the enemy. We don't want to be like Eve, who listened to the devil, and got into his trap. We want to be victorious all the days of our life, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, and we believe my brothers and sisters here are warriors in the kingdom of God, and they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm so glad that you listened to the whole teaching, and I believe that the Holy Spirit has taught you so many good principles, and you will put this principle into practice in your daily life. In John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus said, "If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him." It's so wonderful to have the Lord Jesus and the Father. In your life and over your life to protect you because you obey His teaching, and I believe that the Lord will shower His blessing and pour out His grace and favor upon you because you love Him and He shows love to you. God bless you, and I will see you in the next teaching. I want to encourage you to reach your destiny and live an enduring legacy. I want you to declare the blessing upon your life. You will be full of wisdom. You are prosperous. You are healthy. You become an overcomer. 
you become spiritually mature. You become more like Jesus Christ. You have higher levels of anointing. You walk in great grace. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.